Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Earth Science screencast with your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And today we're going to go into comets, meteors, and we'll also do a little bit with constellations. Okay, comets, nothing more than small bodies of rock, iron, and frozen water uh, gases that orbit the sun. A highly elliptical orbits them. Uh, they get very close to the sun, and what ends up happening is that they vaporize. So here, the sun would be in this direction. And because the sun's rays come in and hit this way, then the solar wind causes that vaporization to go that way. So we can actually tell where the sun is based on um, that vapor trail that it leaves behind. They believe they come from the Oort cloud, which is this region outside the orbit of Pluto. Um, and this is combined with a highly elliptical orbit is why we only see them periodically. Okay, so there's that highly elliptical orbit. Once again, elliptical is very similar to oval-like. So the more elliptical, the more oval-like will be. And you can see here Jupiter is relatively uh, spherical. And then we have our sun right here. And notice that vapor trail kind of coming off in the di direction from where the sun is, but highly elliptical orbit. Here's the Oort cloud. This is that region that extends out into our solar system, very far out, the farthest reaches of our solar system. Uh, some people believe it's like a light year out. Some people think it's three light years out. Uh, but it is this region of icy objects that extending the farthest reaches of our solar system, which takes us to our Kuiper belt, which is another area where we have more objects in, but it's a little bit closer. The Oort clouds is farthest out. Kuiper belt's a little bit closer in. Here's Hale-Bopp Comet, Haley's Comet. Uh, this is Shoemaker-Levy. Uh, this is when it was starting to break up as it's going in towards Jupiter, okay, which brings us to meteors or shooting stars. Range can be as small as a grain of sand to a softball, and they enter Earth's atmosphere. The friction causes to heat up and basically is kind of vaporizing or heating up enough the gases leaves a streak across the sky. Um, when Earth enters, the meteor stream left by a comet produces a meteor shower. So that's all the debris left over from a comet coming in at a, a bunch of times, basically, one after the other. And if a meteor survives the heat from Earth's atmosphere or from reentry, uh, it hits the ground and is called a meteorite. So it's a meteor while it's going through the sky, meteorite if it hits the ground. So here the meteors right here. Okay. And we can see. That the, com uh, the comet particles spread out, and then as we move in, this is when they'll start coming in. Put that little S on there. Okay, and that takes us back to page 15. Once again, uh, this is just a solar system data chart with all the different information about it. We'll go into this more uh, later on, or definitely in class. And then we're going to look talk a little bit about constellations. So constellations are just groups of stars that make identical patterns or pictures in the sky. Uh, basically uses to help, uh, used to help us track celestial motions, what's kind of going on in the nighttime sky. Here's Orion by its characteristic uh, three stars forming that belt. Okay, Cassiopeia, the W shape. Okay, this is just some. On uh, the Big Dipper, so it starts over here making its way down and over. Okay, the Little Dipper. And notice our important star right here, Polaris, on the handle of the Little Dipper. And this is the most important part. Polaris on the Little Dipper can be found by looking at the Big Dipper and drawing a straight line over and we could find Polaris. So it's an easy way to find Polaris in the nighttime sky. Okay, so Polaris, speaking of, uh, is located once again directly above Earth's axis, and it helps us by kn the, knowing the altitude of Polaris allows us to find our degree of latitude. So basically it was used for navigation. And once again, we only see this within the Northern Hemisphere and the astrolabes, uh, which we'd made earlier on in the year, is the instrument used to find that angle of Polaris or the altitude of Polaris, sorry. Okay, remember that as we rotate, we can create star trails around that to help us show that once again, that Earth is rotating. And there's Polaris right towards the middle. 
and just some more star trials uh, with 15 degrees per hour is our rate of rotation. Remember, we can figure that from the arc that the star trail creates. Okay. Um, everything in the, our sky appears to rise in the east and set in, in the west. Once again, Earth rotates 15 degrees per hour. That's it. Hope you enjoyed this screencast. Take care.